What's up, everyone? Mark Obliner, TigerFitness.com. So I just, uh, check it out. A couple times a year, well, more than that, I'll usually split a half cow with one of my neighbors. Big fan of beef, one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, if not the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. Red meat is amazing. It tastes good. You got burgers. You got taco meat. You got all these things you can do with it. You got sirloin. You got ribeye. You got New York strip. It is so good. I love beef. Thing is, man, the data, the data has been telling us that beef will kill you. And the vegans are like, beef is going to kill you. The cholesterol in your arteries. Oh, no. And you're like, wait, hold on. Hold on. Then you got the carnivore people. Right? They're eating pounds of red meat a day and thriving. Their blood markers are getting better. They're getting rid of diseases. They're crushing it. They're crushing it. So there's new data coming out. Is red meat bad for you? And remember, a lot of the old studies on red meat were on meat consumption, utilizing mostly processed foods. So now we have a study on unprocessed beef. Let's go. We actually have data. I'm excited. And if you're excited, you're going to want to hear the rest of this video. Before we go to the rest of this video, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell, comment down below, go to tigerfitness.com, coupon code MAHA, M-A-H-A, MAHA, gets you 10% off the entire site, tigerfitness.com, including if you don't like beef, we got Planta, plant-based protein. But if you do like animal protein, we got MTS, we got all kinds, hundreds of brands, coupon code M-A-H-A, 10% off. Anyway, let's go. Here is the study. I'm going to show it to you right here. Boop. Beef consumption and cardiovascular disease risk factors. A systematic review and meta analysis of randomized controlled trials. And this was done in December of 2024, just a few, a couple months ago. A couple months ago. So it is timely, it is rhymely, and it is funky fresh. Woo, let's go. So I'm going to read off my notes on this data and we can discuss it. And I will also give my thoughts on how you can utilize this data and make your life even better. So check it out. So let's talk about this systematic review and meta analysis is published in the current developments in nutrition. And essentially it's about does eating unprocessed beef that is not ultra processed foods impact cardiovascular health so it analyzed data from 20 randomized controlled trials rcts to determine whether consuming fresh unprocessed beef affects blood pressure and clean blood liquid li blood lipids factors that commonly link to heart disease so let's break down the findings so the study aimed to assess the impact of unprocessed beef consumption on blood pressure and blood lipids, including total cholesterol, LDL or the bad cholesterol, HDL or the good cholesterol, triglycerides, apolipoproteins A and B, non-HDL cholesterol, and VLDL cholesterol, which is very low density lipoprotein. Not good. Not good cholesterol, not the good cholesterol. The HDL is the good cholesterol, but there is some debate now on whether LDL is all bad, whether we misunderstand it, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So here's what the data show. You ready? Drum roll. No significant effect on blood pressure or most lipids. Consuming unprocessed beef did not significantly alter blood pressure, total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, non-HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, apolipoprotein A, apolipoprotein B, or VLDL cholesterol, this suggests that for most cardiovascular markers, eating fresh beef does not post a major risk. Now, there was a small increase in LDL or the bad cholesterol. Again, debatable. The carnivore guys, if you say that LDL is bad, they will punch you right in the mouth. And uh, Sean Baker's a large man. I don't want to get punched in the mouth by Sean Baker. The study found a minor but statistically significant increase in LDL, about 2.7 milligrams per deciliter in those consuming more unprocessed beef. By the way, that is very, very small. Statistically significant, but in my opinion, and I'm not a doctor, I'm an idiot, for your health, very insignificant. LDL cholesterol is often labeled bad because higher levels are associated with increased risk in heart disease. Again, debatable. The carnivore guys, again, they will fight you over this. 
However, when one specific study was removed from the analysis, this LDL increase disappeared, meaning the effect might not be as consistent as initially seen, meaning there was one study out of all the studies they looked at that showed this, which skewed everything. Implications for heart disease risk. Despite the slight LDL increase, there was no clear evidence that unprocessed beef negatively impacts cardiovascular health when looking at other markers. This contradicts the common belief that all red meat consumption leads to heart disease. The authors suggest that other lifestyle factors, diet quality, and genetic predisposition likely play a bigger role than just red meat intake. People don't understand. A lot of times, I believe I read, and I could be wrong, and correct me in the comment section, isn't cholesterol like 80% genetic, right? Like, that's nuts. So, for years, years, mainstream dietary guidelines have warned against red meat consumption. You know, the same people who gave us the food pyramid, you know, responsible for killing a ton of Americans throughout the years. No big deal. NBD, playing it for high heart disease, high cholesterol, other metabolic conditions. However, this study challenges that narrative in a few ways. Number one is context matters. Most previous studies lump processed and unprocessed meat together making it difficult to isolate the effects of fresh beef. Dietary pattern is also key. Someone eating steak with a side of broccoli and sweet potatoes, I say this all the time, is going to have very different health outcomes than someone eating a cheeseburger with fries and a soda. And LDL alone is not the full story. Not all LDL particles are harmful. There are large fluffy LDL particles that may not contribute to heart disease the same way that small, dense LDL particles do. This study didn't measure LDL particle size, so the risk remains unclear. So what does this mean for you? So if you enjoy eating fresh, unprocessed beef, you likely don't need to worry about any major negative effects on your cardiovascular health, as long as it's part of a balanced diet. Um, here's how you make it balanced. Pair your beef with whole nutrient dense foods, vegetables, healthy fats, complex carbs. I'm not keto, man. I like me some carbs, limit processed meats like hot dogs, deli meat, bacon, except pastrami. Pastrami is un infallible. Pastrami is amazing. Uh, consider individual factors, family history, current cholesterol levels. Again, a highly genetic component exists in cholesterol levels and balanced protein sources. You know, you don't have to eat beef all the time. You know, I personally like to mix in some chicken and turkey, but if you eat beef all the time, for me, I don't see that as a big deal. And also realize you don't have to get fatty cuts of meat. You can get sirloin. If I'm not mistaken, sirloin and round are as lean as chicken breast. I could be wrong. They're very close. So beef isn't the enemy. Poor dietary patterns are, and the consumption of ultra-processed, highly palatable foods. Instead of demonizing on processed beef, we should, we, should, um, we should focus on how we consume it and what the rest of our diet looks like. So if you're eating the unprocessed beef and you're pairing it with Funyuns, probably not good, right? Studies another step towards debunking the outdated narrative that all red meat is bad for you. Sorry, vegans. Science is winning here. While excessive consumption of processed meats and ultra-processed, highly palatable foods and an overall poor diet can be detrimental, unprocessed beef does not appear to harm cardiovascular health. And in some cases, it is, it is definitely, in all cases, it's going to make your diet more nutrient-dense. So if you're worried about cholesterol, focus on the bigger picture, your overall lifestyle, diet, training, all that good stuff, nutrient intake, activity levels. Instead of blaming a single food group, consider how everything in your diet and daily routine plays a role. So what are your thoughts, man? Do you guys eat beef? How much beef do you eat? I personally eat a lot of beef. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Lobliner. That's not a game. Are you currently taking LMNT for your electrolytes? That's great. Electrolytes are very important, especially for athletes. The problem is I think they took it a little too far. 1,000 milligrams of sodium per packet. That's great if you're an endurance athlete running in high temperatures, 100 plus. But if you're not perspiring that much, if you're not doing that much activity, if you're simply exercising, well, normally, it's a lot. You're looking at intake, you take a few packets, 10,000 milligrams of sodium a day. 
So what I like to do is I like to flavor all my water with electrolytes because electrolytes are vitally important and vitally important for you to intake. Now, what do I do? I take Ambrosia Hydroglyph. So Ambrosia Hydroglyph available in stick packs as well as bags. Now, it's beyond sodium, potassium, magnesium. It has other things that will help your body keep muscle and perform better. It has the essential amino acids. It has your branch chain amino acids. It has Velocitol, which doubles the power of those amino acids. It even has my HMB. So if you're really training hard, it staves off muscle loss. If you're looking for something well beyond the current electrolyte you're taking, something that won't overdo it, but give you everything needed to perform at your best and be as healthy as possible, Ambrosia Hydroglyph is your choice.